When a high-profile company is targeted by a ransomware attack, it garners media attention. Such was the case in February last year, when the personal data of some 129,000 Singtel customers was extracted by hackers. Many smaller-scale ransomware attacks go unreported. At the same time, the attacks have become more sophisticated. We've seen the number of cases in Singapore go up from about um, more than 50% in the last one year, up to 137 cases reported to us last year. And these are only the reported cases. I'm sure there are many other cases which haven't been reported to the authorities. Initially, when the criminals started to do this, they did it at a small scale. They are targeted individuals, small and medium enterprises, and the amount of ransom that they charged was at a very small level. Just a uh, um, so, so the victim would typically pay the ransom because it was an inconvenience, etc. But it was a lucrative business because the um, uh, attackers, the criminals, were able to do this repeatedly across the board many times. The criminals have now evolved and they have uh, become more organized and they have formed into very large gangs. Most ransomware attacks begin as phishing attacks. This is when a cyber criminal sends an email or link to a user that mimics a legitimate website or portal. If the user is fooled by this, hackers can extract their password and other personal data. According to CSA, there were about 55,000 Singapore-hosted phishing sites observed in 2021. That refers to links with a .sg domain, and it's a 17% increase from 2020. A couple of months ago, one of the SMEs had a phishing track. There was an email from Ministry of Manpower, and the boss got the secretary to, you know, the boss thought that the email looked very much like uh, from MOM. It had the name of the officer, the contact number, and it came from that email as well. So, you know, the office called MOM and MOM said, yeah, we do send out those kind of emails. But then on deeper checks with the ministry, they found that that particular email was actually a phishing scam. So that's the standard of uh, uh, phishing emails that we are talking about. The ability to actually uh, localize in terms of lingo, language, format, such that intuitively you will not think that it is a uh, phishing email and the fact that they can make even uh, the government addresses, email addresses as well. After the initial phishing attack, the cyber criminals can move on to a ransomware attack. What happens is that they uh, come into your computer system and then they launch a specific type of uh, malicious uh, software which locks up your entire computer system so that you can't then access it and they then tell you that we have locked up your computer. If you want access to this computer, please pay us a certain amount of money, which is the ransom. Hence the term ransomware. Uh, so it's ransom malware. According to cybersecurity firm Sophos, the amount of money paid in ransoms during such attacks has more than doubled globally. Singapore ranked sixth globally paying an average ransom of 1.16 million US dollars in 2021. This is despite law enforcement and cybersecurity experts advising companies not to pay the ransoms. The reality on the ground is if you don't have a reliable backup, for example, a reliable way of restoring your files without paying the ransom, then you may suffer, uh, you know, a catastrophic loss of your, of your operating, uh, your business, you know, your ability to operate. Um, so, when we say to people, "Don't pay the ransom," it it sort of negates all of those other factors that prompt people to pay the ransom. And then, yeah, as far as law enforcement goes, we've always, again, asked them to please report this crime because it really does help, uh, even in the formation of laws against, uh, you know, paying ransoms for digital crimes, right? These, if, if we know how big the problem is, then there will be a, a bigger appetite uh, at the government level to be able to, to craft these laws and pass these laws with public support. 
The government has acknowledged the challenges that SMEs face in beefing up their cybersecurity. We have launched many uh, programs which could help SMEs. Many of them are actually free. For example, um, CSA has launched the SG CyberSafe program uh, in 2021. Uh, this provides free toolkits which you can download from us, get access from us um, uh, for free. Uh, these are designed for the leaders, the, the bosses in the SMEs. They are designed for all their employees as well as for their IT departments. The agency also has a Cyber Essentials certification to help businesses prioritize their cybersecurity measures. And while a lack of trained personnel remains a challenge for SMEs, cybersecurity is more than an IT problem. First of all, it's an issue of resource. You don't have enough people, you don't have enough money, you don't have an IT department. So this is indeed a real a big resource. But I also want to address um, uh, perhaps a misconception that cyber is not just a technical issue. Uh, yes, at the base level, there are technical issues, but I would like to urge uh, us to understand from the small and medium enterprises, I want to say that cyber actually is a business risk issue. If you understand that your business depends on digitalization, your business depends on your computer databases, etc., then actually as a business leader, you need to be aware of the risks that you're taking with respect to cyber and you need to be able to deal with this.